All right. So yeah, thanks for everyone that came today. Um, we're going to start off by doing a giveaway. I, I have a few prizes. Um, I have, I don't know if any of you guys like stance socks. I got a pair of stance socks, um, a mission belt, and then um, one of our new UVU ties. Yeah, so yeah, so if you guys want to follow our, our page and then comment here on our most recent post, I'll give you guys a minute or so to do that, and then I'll call up the winners. Um, Kurt, let's go Kurt. All right, yeah, so you wanna come up and just pick one of these? Okay, the belt, cool, go for it, yeah. Okay, and then let's see. Is there, uh, Bertha? All right, Bertha. Cool. All right, Bertha, which one is you? All right, cool. <laughs> and then for the tie, let's see. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not getting a lot of reception in here. Um, did anyone else comment? Or follow the page that wants to tie? Any of you guys? All right, <laughs> this guy right here. <laughs> there you are, Thank man. You Thank you guys for participating. <laughs> cool, so um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I wanna get started um, and just uh, talk to you guys a little bit about um, what my um, university uh, experience has been like, um, what it's been like starting a company um, and being the marketing manager for, for a tech company in Lehigh while being a student as well. Um, so I, I, you know, when, when I was preparing for, um, for, for the career passport lecture series, um, they sent me a list of questions, um, you know, suggestions of things I could talk about. Um, and one of them that really stood out to me was, um, was, was this one, you know, uh, did you have any unique experiences, um, that, that kind of led you here, um, and, and that kind of helped you get where you are right now? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Um, exactly three years ago, um, October of uh, 2014, um, I, I was actually working um, for my uncle's company um, doing concrete polishing. Um, <clears throat> and in that company, it was, uh, you, you know, we would get started at work at 6 a.m. and then we would finish at around uh, 6 p.m. every single day. So it was, you know, 12 hour days, you, you know, really long days of, of really hard labor. Um, and then um, one night, you know, we were doing a job uh, out in Idaho, and I got home, um, or sorry, I, I got to the hotel, and um, I, I, I typically like uh, liked, liked to listen to podcasts. And I was listening to a podcast about a speaker um, that was talking about um, having a vision for the future. Um, and he mentioned, uh, in order to have a vision towards the future, um, you you kind of need to go back and, and look at your past first. Um, and then he, he quoted um, a, a quote that I really like by George Santiana. Um, he said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. <clears throat> and it was, uh, I don't know, it, it really stood out to me in, in, in that podcast. So that same night I, I Googled, you know, what is, where does the name Lopez come from? Um, I, I, I don't know too much about my ancestors. So I, you, you know, I Googled, what is Lopez, where, where does that name come from? And the only answer I could find for like the first 10 pages was, it means wolf, you know? And I'm like, what does that even mean? So I, I started looking up, um, what did, you know, the origin of the name Lopez, um, where it started, and then what, what the job description was of, of people that had that last name. And in medieval times, if your last name was Lopez, um, you were typically a peasant and you were uh, a wheelbarrow pusher. 
and I, I thought it was interesting, and it, it was kind of funny. Um, and I didn't make much of it until the very next day. Um, you, you know, I woke up at 6. Uh, I was on my way to work, and my uncle uh, had brought my, my younger brother down because um, it, it was, you know, a, a really big job, a, a really big warehouse that we needed to finish. And he took a picture of me uh, working, and he showed me the picture. And so this is me. Uh, let's see, I think this is. So this is me, and then this is my younger brother. <clears throat> and it, it was interesting because, you know, just that night before, you know, it said Lopez is, you know, typically a wheelbarrow pusher. And a thousand years later, you know, here I was. Um, I was pushing this machine, you, you know, very similar to how one would push a wheelbarrow. And I, I mean, this job probably pays a little bit more than being a wheelbarrow pusher. Um, but, you know, it was, a, it was a moment of reflection that day when, when I saw that picture. And I, I thought, man, <clears throat> it's funny, like, a thousand years later, we're doing the exact same thing. Um, if my kids ever stumble upon this information, that's probably not something that, you know, I, I want them to, um, to, to, to notice, you know, the fact that, you know, a thousand years have gone by and, and nothing has changed. So, um, with that in mind, I, I figured, um, you, you know, I'd, I, I'd get an education. Uh, my parents had always stressed the importance of an education, um, but I was, uh, I was a bit reluctant on, you know, going to school and, uh, you know, I just assumed one day, uh, you know, I'd, I'd take over this company and, um, you know, find success there. Um, but, but that day, uh, I was really set on, on getting an education, so I feel that I, you know, I saw what my options were. Um, I found out about Utah Valley University. They offered in-state tuition for the summer, filled out my application, and then I was here. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, being here at, at Utah Valley University, I was, uh, um, in, I, I, I started off by studying accounting, um, and then in one of our Business 1010 classes, uh, I, I don't know if you guys, any of you guys took that class, uh, but in that class they typically have you, um, create like a company that, you, you know, an ideal company that you would like to run and, you know, that you could have fun, uh, running. Um, so I, I presented to our group, it was like a group of about four or five students, and I said, hey, um, we live in Utah, uh, I've had this idea about starting this company uh, where we could do ties for, you know, dudes that have served missions, and the ties can have a, a little logo on the bottom corner, um, and, and, you know, we're in the area with the right demographic, a ton of kids that go to school here have served missions, like, it'll be perfect, you know. Um, <clears throat> long story short, we ended up doing a project on a software, like a improving Canva type software, something like that. Um, but I, I, I took that information and that research um, that I had presented to, to our group, um, and what I did is I, you know, I said, I'm gonna do this. Um, I don't have the knowledge to run the company. So I, 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 you know, I was asking my professors questions every single day after class. Um, and then there was one professor that said, dude, you're overthinking things, just start the company. You know, make a few ties, see if they sell. If it works, do it. Don't worry about, you know, legal stuff, or any of that stuff. Just make some ties, see if they sell, and go from there. Um, so, so, you know, sure enough, I had a few ties made, and um, this was my apartment. <clears throat> it was a really tiny apartment, um, twin bed, um, and then, you know, the rest of it was just boxes of ties and a small desk where I, I would draw the designs and then send them off to our factory in China. Um, so it was a cool experience. That's, that's kind of how, how everything started. Um, just, just out of my apartment, um, I, I didn't have a lot of money in funding, um, just a little bit of savings and uh, a, a little bit of money that, that I was able to, to get from my uncle. Okay. Um, so the company started and, you, you know, we had our online store. Uh, we were promoting a lot on Facebook, Instagram. I was able to learn about uh, a lot about Facebook Business Manager, um, how to run ads on there, um, and, and then, you know, how to run ads on Instagram as well. Um, three months down the road, um, you, you know, I had emailed probably a thousand stores saying, hey, I have this cool product. Can we please have our ties in your store? 
Um, and three months down the road, I got my first call back from Deseret Book. Um, for, for those of you that don't know, uh, Deseret Book is in nine states. They have 43 stores, and they have an online store as well. Um, they started off, and they said, hey, you know, we think your, your tie could, could do very well in our store, so we'll start off um, just online. So they ordered, like, 40 ties or something like that, and, and we started off with some online sales. A week later, they all sold out. Um, a week after that, they said, hey, we want to try these in a few of our stores. Um, all of those sold as well. <clears throat> now, uh, you know, our company is going to hit its two-year mark in November, and we have purchase orders coming in from Desert Book every single week, and sometimes multiple um, purchase orders. Um, we also have them in uh, Missionary Mall um, here in Provo and in Idaho. Um, and then, so... You know, being in Deseret Book uh, and Missionary Mall, I, s I thought, you know, this is cool. Um, it's an exciting feeling going to, the, to, the, to those stores and then, you know, seeing your ties there and then seeing someone buying it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really interesting feeling, you know. Um, it's, it's, uh, at least for me, it's, it's, it's very fulfilling to, to, to be able to see, um, you, you know, where, where my work is, like, from, from a physical standpoint. Um, <clears throat> But so, you, you know, we got into all of the Deseret Book stores, um, we, you know, and a few other stores, um, Here Gallery in downtown Provo, Missionary Mall, uh, Colonial Flag in Sandy, uh, and, and I thought, you, you know, what else can we do? Where else would these ties sell, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, I discussed it with a lot of people, um, and we came to the terms of trying out selling these ties in airports. Um, a few weeks later, you know, after having that discussion, uh, we went to a vendor's conference at the Seattle airport. Uh, they, they were hosting one there. Um, and we just so happened to be sitting at the table with the CEO of, of a store called Exophysio. Um, and they have stores in the Seattle, um, the SeaTac, the JFK in New York, and the Atlanta airports. And <clears throat> we were sitting at the table with this guy, and he said, hey, uh, what are you guys selling? And, and you know, we kind of pitched it to him. Right away, he said, you know, that would be an awesome product for our stores. Let's talk. Um, a few weeks later, our ties were in, in the Atlanta airport, um, and they're, they're right here. And then they're in the Seattle airport and in the JFK airport. Um, and these stores get uh, approximately 1,000 people um, in traffic a day. So, you, you know, it's just a, a massive amount of people going through these stores. Um, you, you know, first month in these stores, um, we, we sold 40% of the purchase order, which, which is quite a bit. Um, and, and, you know, it was, it was a pretty massive purchase order. So things have been going good with, with Atlanta, um, uh, New York, and the, uh, the Seattle air airports with Exophysio right now. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, being in, this, in these stores, um, there was another store that, that we really wanted to get into. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Hudson News. Um, they're in every single airport in the country. Um, and they're actually in, uh, they have 970 stores across the world, um, in bus terminals, train stations, and airports. And um, 700 of those 970 are retail locations. Um, so, you, you know, we were very persistent on meeting them um, at the vendor conference. We didn't hear back from them for several months. And then just three weeks ago, we heard back from them. Um, they apologized for taking, you know, X amount of months to get back to us, and they said, hey, um, one of our buyers saw your product. Uh, you know, we want to present this to our committee. They presented it to their first committee, and now it's in their second committee. Um, so, you know, hopefully we, we can be in at least 700 of those 970 locations that they have um, uh, through, through, throughout the world. Um, if they do, you know, that, that, that'll be a lot of su uh, success for our company. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit about the Town & Co, how it started, um, a timeline of, of where it is right now. Um, you know, the company has brought me um, definitely a lot of stress. There, there have been a lot of things that I've had to figure out um, that, that, you know, I would never assume that I, I could have. Um, but it's also brought me a lot of joy, a lot of excitement, like I said. Uh, there's nothing like going to a store and seeing your product there. You know, it's, it's, it's a really good feeling. Um, so with that being said, um, you know, um, I, I'd, you, I'd be, you know, an ignorant person to say that I was able to do all of this on my own. Um, 
all of this started because I made the decision, you know, to leave my concrete job and, you know, get, get an education and, and study business. Um, like I said, I was studying accounting. Um, however, I, I was having a really hard time focusing in accounting um, and, you know, the accounting classes. And uh, I don't know, there were several moments where I said, maybe school just isn't for me. Uh, but there was one day where I took a business presentations class, um, and, and I met, you know, a very special professor. Um, she's uh, she was a, a top tier executive at IM Flash, um, which is based out of Lehigh. It's you know an enormous company, um, and she was very passionate about marketing. And I did a presentation on my company one day in class, and from that day forward, you know, she really believed in me, and she said, "I'm going to help you." get to wherever you need to get with this company. Um, <clears throat> a few months down the road, uh, this professor taught me a lot about public relations. And public relations is actually my favorite part about marketing. Uh, what it is, it's talking with the press, you know, talking with um, the news, uh, being in magazines, being on TV, thing, things along the lines of that. It's, it's very exciting stuff. Um, and just, this is just in the last year, and, and you know, this is just a fraction of, of um, the, the media that, that we've been in. We've been in Utah Business Magazine, uh, the Daily Herald, KSL.com, uh, UVU Magazine. Univision came to uh, the school and they filmed a special on you know, a student um, uh, that, that owns his own company. Um, and then NBC right now did a special on us as well, um, al along with you know, Deseret News multiple times and, and several other outlets. Um, now, the reason why I like public relations so lot is because of the reach you can get. Um, we use social media a lot um, to, to, to promote our product, um, and, and you guys are all familiar with you know, how social media works nowadays, uh, collaborating with you know, influencers, with other people, um, but it's not quite the same thing, um, you know, regardless of who you collaborate with. Uh, it's not quite the same thing. Uh, it's not the same effect that you get out of that than you know when when you get a, a, a news release out. Um, you, you know when when the KSL article came out. Oh, sorry about that. Um, it got I, I believe um, last I checked they had 135,000 views on on the video there in that article. Um, it brought us a lot of sales, um, but not only that, <clears throat> it also did something. Um, very unique for us. And uh, what, what it did for us is um, there was a, a, the VP of operations for um, a tech company in Lehigh called Boom Sourcing. Um, and the CEO one night, you know, he was watching TV and he saw that video. Um, and then it just so happens that the VP of operations is, is good friends with, with a friend of ours. Um, and, and one day, you know, he was talking about hiring, you know, a new marketing manager for the company, um, and, and they were talking about me. Um, he said, my, my friend was like, hey, I have a buddy that runs this company. It's, um, you know, got, got in a lot of press. It's, it's been, you know, somewhat successful, and, you, you know, you should consider talking to this guy. Um, he's like, all right, I'll run this by the CEO. <clears throat> the CEO was like, oh, yeah, that's the guy from the KSL video. I saw that a few weeks ago. Um, so long story short, they invited me in for lunch. Um, we, we went out to lunch, um, and it was interesting. Uh, you, you know, we we think that you know we come to school and um, we get a degree, and you know we learn how to build a resume, and then we have a job. Um, but in this situation, uh, you know, he we just had lunch, and then a few hours later. He gave me a, a, you know, a very generous job offer to be the marketing manager of a company with about 1,250 employees. Um, and I, I told him, I said, hey, full disclosure, like I haven't even graduated yet. Um, you know, I, I work for a social media company and I run my own company, but that's, that's a pretty big task. Um, and the CEO is like, hey, I've heard about you. Quite a few people at work have heard about you. I, I just want you to do that for our company. That's it. Um, and, and like I said, a few hours later, I, I had a job offer for this company called Boom Sourcing. Um, what it is, it's, it's based out of Lehigh. Um, it's a business a process outsourcing company. Um, and what that means is uh, a lot of companies, uh, you, you know, have certain business process, uh, you, you know, functions that are very expensive. Uh, hire, hiring a team of customer service representatives 
and can, can be very costly. Uh, you know, you, you have to pay them a wage, you have to set up a desk, and you have to rent out space to have those people working for you, right? So what we do is we own a call center um, or several call centers in the Philippines and in Mexico. And um, we say, hey, we'll give you a representative for, you know, for a, a much lower amount than it would cost you to, you, like I said, have a desk, have an employee that you pay an hourly wage. Um, we'll, we'll handle it over there. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Um, a lot of times we don't like talking to people that we, we can't understand, you know. Um, communication is a very important thing. Um, and that's why uh, what, what makes this company so special is perfect pitch technology. Um, and what perfect pitch technology does is it, it corrects um, the dialect that the person might have when they're speaking English and it makes them sound American. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a very unique software um, that, you know, he has a patent on and, and that, that makes, you know, our, our company stand out uh, uh, above the rest. Um, and, you, you know, along with customer service, they offer customer acquisition um, and, and, you know, a, a, an array of, of other things to help cus, um, companies and mainly startups focus on what they do best, which is their product and service, and then we'll handle the back end, customer service, lead generation, sales development, um, and things along the lines of that. Um, uh, with this company, uh, it's, it's, it's been a very unique experience. You know, first week in, um, we, we had a meeting with our media company, and they said, hey, you have to prep your CEO. He has a meeting with Forbes, you know, in a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, I've, I've had some press, but I've never talked to someone at Forbes, you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's an awesome experience. You know, I'm, I'm able to network with, um, you know, some very uh, high-profile uh, media companies. Um, we just had an article, um, uh, or we just finished putting together the article for entrepreneur.com. He's going to be on there as well. Um, and this, um, in a few weeks, uh, you, you know, I, I, I had to plan an event where we're renting out uh, the University of Utah Stadium. We already rented it out. It's like $3,000 an hour or something like that. We rented it out for the day. Um, and what we're going to be doing is inviting other CEOs to come kick some footballs with us. Um, and, and donate books, um, you, you know, to, 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 to low-income families um, so, so that the children's, uh, the, the family's children can, can, can have books at home. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's an awesome experience. You know, we have an awesome CEO. Um, he cares a lot about education, um, you know, so he, you know, lets me have my own schedule. Um, there's no set time I have to go in. Um, and, and he, you know, he lets me do my own thing. So it's an awesome job. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of a company called Chatbooks. Uh, if any of you guys have heard about that, um, what they do is they like print out your, your Instagram in a book, your Instagram photos. Um, so her sister or her brother, uh, the, the founder of Chatbooks is Vanessa Quigley. Her brother is the CEO of, of the company that, that I work for right now. So, you know, um, great stuff. I'm, I'm going to be able to meet with Vanessa. We're, we're going to do a post um, together about this event. Um, so, like, like I said, um, the Town & Co. Um, did so much for me. Um, and then, you know, professors uh, have taught me several things to take that company to the next level. And that has opened up, you, you know, several opportunities as well yeah, to, to be able to network with, with these people. Um, <clears throat> and I was actually preparing this lecture, you, you know, actually, I, I prepared all of it last night. And yesterday morning, actually, not last night. But I was talking to the VP of operations, and I was like, dude, why did you guys hire me? And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a student. I'm just a kid. It's like, yeah, we have this company. But like, what really stood out to you at that lunch, like, or, or to the CEO? Why did you guys hire me? Um, and he's like, well, we, we help businesses scale smarter at, at Boom Sourcing and with uh, Perfect Pitch Technologies. He said, you started a business in college, and you were able to scale it. Um, he said, so that's the first thing we like. You know, you understand our company, you, you know, just from there. You understand what we do um, and the struggle people go through um, when, when they're starting their own company as well. Um, he said, uh, you, you know, that also shows a lot of self-motivation, being able to start your own company. Um, it shows a lot of grit. You know, when you start a company, you run into several issues, and it's up to you 
to either fix those problems and move forward and progress, or you know, to crash and burn as soon as you, you know, run into those issues. Um, and then the CEO, you know, he said, um, we want others to hear about us just how they're hearing about you. Um, in, in a sense, he said, we have a strong marketing team. You know, we haven't done too much with marketing, um, but, but we want to start getting our name out there you know, a lot more. Um, we feel like down the, um, you, you know, as, as things progress towards the future, uh, marketing is going to be very important for our company, and you know, we don't want to regret not having done that. So um, <clears throat> that, that ends the, the slides, but um, you know, I, I, I do, I do want to ha um, you know, share just a, a little bit of advice. Um, like, like I said earlier, you know, we, we come to school looking for an education, um, and do we ever ask ourselves why? You know, why do we want an education? And the answer might be a lot of times, so I can have a job that pays well, you know? Um, but I've actually met a lot of people that have graduated already um, and, and that are still kind of trying to find their place in life. You know, they're still trying to find out where they can even um, find employment. Um, so I guess my only advice would be, um, you know, if you guys are in school, and you know what you like, find a job. You know, find the job, um, even if it's only you know 15 hours um, a week. You know, a small part-time job. Um, if you like it, you know, whatever it may be that that company has to offer for you as far as employment goes. If it's something that interests you, go work there. My first job when I moved here to Utah, I worked at the Ralph Lauren store in Park City. Um, it paid me like nine bucks an hour and I had to drive like 45 minutes to get there. Um, and you know, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the best circumstances ever, but I love clothing. You know, I love high fashion. Um, and I've, I've, you know, I've, I've read a few um, uh, biographies on Ralph Lauren as well. And uh, he's someone that <clears throat> really inspires me. He actually started off by selling ties. Um, he, he started off, uh, you know, he convinced some people to give him a cubicle in the Empire State Building. And in that cubicle, um, he designed a few ties, you know, had the fabric printed and then the ties sewn together. And then he would go pitch his ties to stores like Bloomingdale's, Brooks Brothers. And a lot of people said no. And um, the uh, Bloomingdale's was the first store to say, yes, we'll carry your ties. Um, and then, you know, the rest is history. Like, Ralph Lauren is, you know, a multi-billion dollar corporation, and, uh, you know, he's been able to live <clears throat> his dreams of being a basketball star, of being a race car driver. He has, you know, the most incredible car collection I've ever seen, and, um, you, you know, he really liked Western movies. He's been able to live that dream through his, the collections he's designed over the years. So, um, and I was, I was able to get a real feel for that working at a store, even though it was retail and, um, you know, being honest, retail isn't very fun, but um, I, I was able to get a sense for, y you know, what he created by working there in that store, you know. Um, uh, later, on, uh, later on down the road, I got a job, a sales job, my very first sales job, I sold medical supplies for, for a medical sales company. Um, and it wasn't fun stuff, you know, it was just cold calling, um, but it taught me a lot, you know. Um, I was able to apply things I learned in, in my classes um, directly to that sales job, you know. Um, later on, uh, you, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to get a job as a social media specialist at, at Boostability. Um, and what I did at that company is I would manage the social media accounts for, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 companies on, on, on any given day. Um, we would set up their Facebook, LinkedIn, and, and Twitter, and then, you know, we would create strategies uh, for them there. Right now, I'm working at, at Boom Sourcing, and it's, it's a great experience, like I said, meeting with Forbes, Chatbooks, Entrepreneur.com. Um, it's, it's right in my ballpark for, for the things that, that I, I really like doing. Um, so that would just be my advice, um, you, you know, um, f find out what you like, and then just work somewhere or, you know, take a few classes, um, regardless of what, what you may think, uh, as far as, well, that degree doesn't pay a lot of money, you know? Um, I actually have a, um, a quick story I'd like to share about one of my barbers back home. Um, his name is Mark, and um, 
you, you know, it's, 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 it's a really funny story. I, I was getting my hair cut by Mark one day, and <clears throat> Mark's, Mark's a really funny dude. He, uh, he was saying something along the lines of, you know, my dad told me that you don't have to be a doctor to, to, to be successful. Um, he said, you know, if you can be the best burger flipper in the world, then you'll be successful and you'll make a lot of money. And he probably quoted that from s something else, you know. Um, and then a few weeks down the road, um, Russell Wilson, I don't know if you guys know Russell Wilson, he's a quarterback for the Seahawks. Um, Russell Wilson gives Mark a call. And Mark gets this call and he's like, hey, who's this? This is Mark from On The Mark Barbershop. He's like, hey man, this is Russell Wilson. Um, can you drive up to Seattle, which was about three hours from where Mark lived? He's like, can you drive up to Seattle and give me a haircut? I have a, I have a promotion um, that we're running pretty soon and I need a haircut. I heard about your, your barber shop. Um, you, you know, a lot of dudes say it's, it's an awesome shop. Can you do it? And Mark was kind of blown away. He's like, you're joking, right? Um, and he's like, no man. Can you do it or can you not do it? Like he's like, I'm, you know, I'm running short on time. And Mark's like, dude, I'll, I'll be there in a few hours. So, you know, Mark canceled all of his appointments for that day, drove up to Seattle and cut his hair. <clears throat> Mark is now, you know, one of the most successful celebrity barbers um, in, in the country. Um, wherever Russell Wilson goes, wherever Macklemore goes, wherever the Seattle Mariners goes, um, he goes with them. He goes to the Super Bowl when the Seahawks go to the Super Bowl um, and, you know, touches everyone up before the game. Um, Mark, uh, you, you know, he's, he's had a lot of people just reach out to him, you know, and he's flown all over the world just cutting hair. Um, he's very successful. So um, if, if you like something, if you're passionate about something, um, don't settle for the status quo of, of you, you know, what people say. You can't make money doing that. You can make a lot of money doing something if you're passionate about it and, you, you know, you, you, you put your effort in into you know doing whatever it is that that you like doing um, with the ties uh, like I said I, I really like fashion um, I'm really hoping to close this deal with Hudson News um, you, you know if 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 we do uh, like I said it, it'll be a very significant um, deal and it, it, it'll be it'll allow me you know to do other things in fashion that you know I've I've already been working on in in the last year um, so I, I guess that's, that's just my advice. Um, if you guys, you know, like something, um, go for it. Uh, my, my other word of advice is, is this, um, is, is, is on education. Um, <clears throat> like, like I mentioned earlier, I've had several thoughts before of, should I continue my education? You know, um, right now as it stands, I, I do make more than, you know, most people with, with an MBA or a bachelor's degree. You know, um, so people always ask me, dude, why are you still in school? You know, um, and, and my, you, you know, it all goes back to what, what we talked about in, in the very first slide. You know, um, I'm, I'm a first generation student. Um, I'm, I'm the very first person, you, you know, first generation in my family to, to, to get a college education. Um, and I, I want that for my legacy, you know. I want my kids to be able to say, um, and maybe not even say, but just know that, you know, their, their parents got an education. Um, you know, I want my grandkids to know that as well. Uh, I feel like, you know, the more and more, um, you know, you know we, 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 we progress over time, um, the more we hear people talking about how education's not that important, how you can do it on your own, how you know, that Ty Lopez thing on YouTube where he's like, hey guys, this is my Ferrari in my garage. Um, he's like, you guys should drop out of college. Um, and then he, you know, gives you a spiel about buying his books. But like I said, getting an education opened my mind um, to being able to do something more than what, you know, what I was doing and what my ancestors did exactly 100 years ago, which was, you know, push a wheelbarrow. Um, like I said, a thousand years went down. Here I was still just pushing a machine, kind of how my ancestors a thousand years ago were just pushing a wheelbarrow as peasants. Um, the, the education um, that, that UVU has, has, has provided, like I said, it opened my mind. It provided a great network. 
Um, and it's, it's helped me get to boom sourcing, and I'm only a junior in college right now, you know? Um, I'm only a junior in college right now, and I'm, I'm very excited to see um, how I'll be able to progress ov over the, 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 the next few semesters that, that await me here at, at UVU. Um, I, I have three semesters left, um, and, and in those three semesters, I, you know, I'm really eager to be able to connect with, with other students, um, hear their ideas, and um, you, you know, be able to connect with, with more professors and, and hear their ideas out as well. Um, it was funny, um, in, in my marketing class, we, when I first started that marketing class, the intro to marketing, we only had nation ties. And this one kid was like, dude, why don't you do state ties? And um, I was like, no, I think it would just be too much of a hassle. Um, you know, we will just do a USA tie. Um, but he's like, no, I, I, I think there, there could be a market for, for state ties. Um, didn't you say you were in Desert Book? And I said, yes. He said, why don't you pitch to those stores, um, you, you know, a state tie for each, um, for, for each state that they're in. And then they can sell that state tie in that specific state. Uh, and I pitched the idea to Deseret Book, and it was like the fastest response they've ever given me. They said, that's a great idea. Um, show us the designs, we'll put in the purchase order. So um, being at school, like I said, um, it's, it's done a lot for me on, on a personal level um, uh, as, as far as you know, um, in, in improving the, the way I think. Uh, it's done a lot for the business. Um, like I said, you know, we, we've had a very great success. Um, that success has brought a lot of joy. And it's, it's done a lot for my career um, and, and for the generations to come. You know, had I not come to UVU, maybe I wouldn't have started this company. Um, had I not come to UVU, um, you, you know, that's something that I wouldn't have been able to share with my kids. Um, and, and who knows where things would, would have, uh, you know, how things would have turned out. Um, but, uh, let's see where we are on time. So, we have about five minutes till 12.45 should, okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, that's, that's kind of how, um, how, how things have, have rolled out for me. Um, at this time, um, she did mention in, in a few minutes we're, we're going to open it up to, to some questions, but I'd, I'd like to even open it up right now um, and, 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 you know, be able to talk to you guys. Um, what questions do you guys have for me? Um, is there something that we can discuss right now? You know, do you have any ideas um, for something you want to do? You know, um, and, and if, you know, if I have in, any type of knowledge on, on being able to help you, I'd, I'd be more than willing to help you guys out. So um, does, does anyone in the crowd have, have, have any questions or uh, ideas they, they'd like to share? Yeah? Okay, so <clears throat> I, I found out about a website um, called uh, uh, Alibaba.com, and what Alibaba is, it's, it's kind of like eBay or Amazon, but what, what, what you find on Alibaba are all of the factories for anything you can think of in China. Um, on, on Alibaba, um, you know, you can make anything from like a cell phone to a sock, you know? Um, so it, I, I went through several different factories. I ordered several prototypes. I wasn't very pleased with, with the first few prototypes. Um, and I was actually pretty scared about quality control. Um, but there was actually a kid um, in one of my classes from Hong Kong. And I asked this guy, I was like, hey, dude, have you heard about Alibaba? And he's like, oh, yeah. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty big in China. And he's like, my family owns a textile company. They, they make fabric, and they sell it to, to factories that make clothing and accessories. And I was like, great, you know? I was like, I actually want to start a Thai company. Could you point me in the right direction to the right factory? Um, <clears throat> so he, he was actually able to give me the contact info for uh, the Thai factory that makes the ties for uh, J. Crew and Zara. I don't know if you guys have heard of those stores, but it's, it's one, one of the, the, the bigger Thai factories there in China. I um, mean, the first prototypes I got were, were great, you know, and this UVU tie was, was made in that factory along with all of the other ties that, that I sell. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how, how, how we found the, the, the factory. Yeah. yeah so, and, um, and anyone else about, you know, yeah? Um, how do you balance everything? You sound super busy, <coughs> but how do you balance school, work, personal life, and everything? 
yeah. Um, that's something that people ask me all the time, um, you know, how do you do it? And, um, well, one, I, I don't play video games, you know. Uh, I actually really liked playing video games when I was a kid. Um, but, you know, I bought an Xbox a few months ago, and I think I've used it like twice since I bought it. I, it's, you know, I wake up, I head off to work, and then I come to class, um, and then I do homework, and then I package all of my orders, and I go to the post office, and that's what a typical day looks like. Um, that includes weekends sometimes. You know, we get really big purchase orders. I'll pay a few friends to come over. We'll put the purchase orders together for Deseret Book, for the airports, um, and we'll get them shipped out. Um, luckily, FedEx, you know, is open until 10 p.m., so, um, and, and the post office has, a, like, a, a, a drop box where you can just drop off your packages at, you know, 24-7. Um, so that's, that's what a typical day looks like. Um, but don't get me wrong, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of, like, just really fun things that, that we do with the company as well. There's, you know, there's a lot of enjoyment. There's a lot of, uh, of, of entertainment. There's a lot of traveling that goes on with the company. Um, so it's... It's not your typical um, young adult lifestyle, but it's a lifestyle that we're probably going to have to live, you know, once once we do start our careers, you know. So it's it's that lifestyle that you know you guys are going to be living once you start your careers, and then you just tack on, you know, three or four hours of homework, class, and packaging orders and stuff like that. So that's 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 really all it is. Yeah. Uh, right, right now, no, we, we, we don't have employees. Um, we're, we're actually already uh, setting up an office space um, and, and all of the, the infrastructure for this Hudson News deal. Um, if, if this does go through, you, you know, we're, we're going to have to hire, you know, quite a few people um, to, to, to make all of it work. Um, and, you, you know, that's another one of the benefits of, of working with Boom Sourcing. Um, they're even willing to, you, you know, put everything up so we have the, the right office space. Um, and, and all of the employees here uh, as we start and then outsource what we can um, uh, later on down the line. Um, right now, like I said, whenever we have those massive purchase orders from the airports, from Deseret Book, um, I'll text some buddies, hey, 50 bucks an hour to come, you know, package some ties if you guys want to come over. And they'll, they'll come over. So that's, 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 that's kind of how, how, how we handle everything right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Uh, it's, 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 it's just me right now. Um, I, I have an uncle that's a dentist, um, and, and he was an investor for the company. Um, he started off with, with an investment that, you know, helped us get that first order. Um, and then we, we usually consult. Um, we, you know, we'll, we'll talk about certain things, um, but as, as far as everything else, as far as operations, design, uh, logistics, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that, that handles all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it, does anyone else have, have any more questions? Um, do any of you guys own a business or are starting a business? No? Ideas? Ideas? Yeah. Um, if you have an idea, like I said, just do it. Um, I, I was really worried when I started the company that, um, you know, I'd have to have like a lot of like legal paperwork done about my designs and protecting, um, if, if, you know, all of that stuff. Um, we have that done now, but when I started, you know, we didn't have any of that. Um, so it's just a matter of starting it, and, and, and if you see it going somewhere, um, then it'll go somewhere, you know? Um, that's, 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 that's how it worked with, with our company, and um, you, you just gotta get your feet wet, you know? You, you, you just gotta, um, uh, like I said, if, is, is it a product or a service? Um, it's a product. Okay. Product. Cool, what, what, what kind of a product is it? Okay, cool, man. Nice. Yeah, so I, I, I like both of those things. Um, if you need help finding a, a good factory and, you know, finding prototypes and things like that, just, just let me know. Uh, yeah? Um, how do you plan or project to advertise for a service? Like, you know, I'm really interested in <coughs> um, kind of brand creating for an industry service. Okay. Um, but, I mean, it's not really a product. You don't have a company. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So Great question. Um, so for, for marketing a service, it's, it's a little bit different than marketing social media, um, than, sorry, mar marketing a product. Um, a product, you, you can market it fairly easily on social media because it's very visual, you know. 
Um, you can make your products look great on you know good looking people, or um, you, you know, or 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 in certain places, you know, good looking scenery, things like that. Um, but with the service, um, one of the things that you know we've found with uh, with boom sourcing, it it is a a, a lot more of, of of human interaction with services, you know, marketing your services. So um, a lot of companies that offer services um, have a sales team. Um, you, you know, if you're in college and, and, and you want to market these services, um, there's an app called Meetup. Have you heard about Meetup? Meetup. So what Meetup is, um, these um, groups get together to talk about certain things. Like there are meetups for real estate meetings, you know, um, where they teach people, um, you, you know, how to buy and sell homes. Um, there are meetups for startups. Um, and then th there are meetups for, for anything that you can think of. Um, so I guess my suggestion would be, you know, find one of those meetups and then, uh, you know, let, let them, you know, uh, give you five minutes to, to, to talk to a crowd, you know, and just say, hey, um, we're offering our Spanish services. If you know of someone um, that would need that, um, you know, we're, we're here to help. Um, one of the ways to scale, um, you know, when you're starting your business is finding a funnel of distribution. You know, um, if, if I was just selling my ties for my house, you know, I'd have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on Instagram ads, um, you, you know, and on, on public relations, uh, uh, you know, paying a media company to do public relations to sell, you know, a lot of product. But since I have distribution with Deseret Book, the airports, you know, and, and you know, the 51 stores that we're in, um, that funnel really helps. So um, it would be a, a matter of, you, you know, formulating um, a, a sales funnel for that service that, that, that you know, you, you currently offer. And we, it's, it's something that, you know, we, you, you know, you can send me an email and, and we, we could definitely just dis, dis, discuss that as well. Cool. All right, so does that conclude? Yeah. All right, well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, thanks for you know, hearing my story and hearing about our company. Um, like I said, uh, more than willing to, to connect with any of you. If you want to connect on LinkedIn uh, or send me an email, um, feel free to do so. And uh, good luck to everyone in, in, in your classes and um, you know, uh, wh wh whatever journey you, you, you decide to take. <laughs>